Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We have got the, I guess, the biggest weekend of the Kentucky Derby uh, prep uh, run-up of the year and last year. Three big 100-point-to-the-winner races. That's 300 points. I think it's a total of 600 points in these three races. We'll find out if some horses are going to get in to the Derby or not. Yeah, one of my favorite weekends of the year, Matt. Uh, not only do we have the three big derby preps that we're going to focus on, but uh, also good cards at each of the three tracks. That's Santa Anita, Keeneland, and Aqueduct, of course. Who's our cover boy, Matt, this week? Uh, oh, there he is. Tapit Trice winning the Tampa Bay Derby. So he is the morning line favorite for the Bluegrass. But we're going to go west and to start with, Matt. We're going to go to the Santa Anita Derby. It's grade one, $750,000. Nine furlongs, a field of nine. I think there are some real long shots in there, Matt. But uh, the morning line favorite is Practical Move, eight to five on the morning line, looking for a third straight graded stakes win. Yeah, based on that, absolutely should be the uh, favorite in this race. I think in the in the recent uh, most recent polls, uh, Practical Move has been second ranked behind Forte. Uh, very impressive in that uh, debut this year um, after winning the Low South Futurity last year. Yeah, and and I, after everything you said, I, I feel like he doesn't get a lot of credit. He was uh, he was the fourth choice last time in the San Felipe, he, impressive winner. But uh, even the uh, the uh, Kentucky Derby Future Wager last week, he was let go higher than several horses. Uh, fell to number three on the latest NTRA poll. Uh, I think he's still underappreciated. I like him. He's a horse who can stay close to the lead, has enough tactical speed to stay in touch at least early, but then he has a real quick burst of see speed. The son of practical joke out of an athlete, Alex Mayer, Low South Futurity winner, San Felipe winner, morning line favor here in the San Anita Derby. Now, the horse I think will get bet a lot uh, and, and actually will be not far behind is Go Rocket Ride, Matt. He's the number three. He was the favorite in the San Felipe, and that was only his second lifetime start coming off a nice maiden win. Go Rocket Ride, speed, speed in that six furlong debut win. He laid second off Hajazi last time and was a game runner up in the San Felipe. Yeah, a game runner. Certainly from the barn of Richard Mandela, this, this is a talented horse. This is a horse in my eyes that we are going to see win some big races as the year goes along. But will it be uh, this weekend in the Santa Anita Derby? Is it enough time for him to mature a little bit more and be able to turn the table on a uh, practical move? I'm not sure. And, and if he gets bet that heavily again, I don't know if that it'll be the smart move, but uh, certainly a horse that is going to do good things in my eyes. Yeah, he, as they say, Matt, he could be any kind. We're throwing the time form U.S. pace projector up here, folks, and you'll see that Go Rocket Ride is projected to have the lead, which he didn't have in the San Felipe. As I mentioned, he was uh, sitting in second early, but uh, like I said, a game second only his second career race. You would think he would improve here third time out. There is some other speed in here. I don't know if it's a uh, uh, real strong early speed. It'll be interesting to see if the six national treasure, formerly trained by Bob Baffert, now trained by Tim Yachtin, who also has practical move, who you see a little farther back here on the early pace projector. It'll be interesting to see how much early speed national treasure shows. He's a, uh, He's fresh after missing the San Felipe with a minor issue. Yeah, and certainly a horse that earlier on, it's certainly a horse uh, uh, in the two-year-old season when he finished second in the American Pharaoh, third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, um, was a horse that, uh, you know, got a good bit of publicity and maybe one of the leaders from the West Coast, but I don't know, uh, came back this year before the minor setback that you mentioned, finished third in the uh, sham. I don't know. Seems to be piling up uh, 
the second and thirds in his career at this point, you know, can't ignore him completely though. Yeah. Yeah. He does. Since uh, winning his debut, he's been uh, a second and third ever since. And uh, the sham, I guess it was disappointing. He was a pretty clear favorite in the sham, which was his only race this year. He didn't run badly. He was only beaten a length, uh, but uh, the horses that beat him, uh, you, you got to wonder if they're quite as good as he'll see here in the Santa Anita Derby. Probably will have to step up here. But like I said, interesting as far as the pace. I want to see if Go Rocket Ride has things easy on the front end or if National Treasure goes after him or maybe one of the horses coming from Sunland Park who both have some early speed as well. That That's a key part of the race in my eyes, Matt. One horse we haven't talked about yet and we need to talk about certainly Skinner. Skinner is not a threat to be out there on the early lead, but John Sheriffs, this is a horse who's tried some big races in the past. He showed flashes, nice win, two starts back, uh, a wide trip, went third in the San Felipe, but then again, he didn't really make up much ground uh, the last uh, the last eighth of a mile down the stretch at Santa Anita. Yeah, I agree, Brian. You know, certainly... Uh... Had a had a nice uh, maiden win, and from the ba the barn of John Sheriffs, uh, uh, you know he can have horses show up uh, and run a big race from time to time when you don't necessarily expect it. Yeah, Skinner uh, Skinner four to one on the morning line. Again, this morning line is from the track. I, I think Practical Move is the favorite, deservedly so. I think Go Rocket Ride will clearly be the second choice. He's listed as the co second choice there with national treasure i think he'll be below national treasure and skinner who figured to be third and fourth choice the fifth choice clearly matt i think the morning line maker has that right it's the japanese invader mandarin hero a real wild card here matt he's run at the same track in japan all five races they've all been good but it's really hard to know what uh we what we can expect to see here at santa anita yeah, a definite wild card. Uh, won his first four races. Uh, the most recent race, he was second, but just beaten by a neck. But yeah, like you said, it, it's really impossible at this point to uh, have any idea of the quality of those races and what to expect from the horse. But the Japanese horses have just continuously been running well in big races. Um, so who knows? Who knows indeed. I am worried about the fact that he's run at the same track every time. And some of those purses are a little lower than some of the purses that I was seeing of the horses running over in Saudi and Dubai, for instance. So my feeling is he might uh, be a, a step below a horse like Der Derma so Sodagaki. But uh, we'll see. Mandarin Hero, a uh, wild card. And as you said, the Japanese have been running big in a lot of big races around uh uh, both uh, overseas, but also in America, as they won uh, a few Breeders' Cup races recently. So we'll see. The other five are all long shots, Matt. Uh, anything stand out to you there? No, the I don't four, think so. I should say. Yeah, there's some legitimate long shots in there, Brian. Yeah, coming from Sunland or coming from maiden races, uh, maybe some uh, potential there with a horse like I don't get it for uh, trainer Doug O'Neill, but uh, seems like a big ask here in the Santa Anita Derby. All right, Matt, we're going to uh, move quickly from Southern California to the bluegrass of Kentucky because we have the, uh, the, the bluegrass itself, the bluegrass grade one, a million dollar race here at Keeneland, also nine furlongs. This one's true, a field of 11. We're going from nine in the Santa Anita Derby to 11 in the bluegrass. We'll have even more in the Wood Memorial, Matt. Uh, a pretty nice field. Once again, I'm going to take a little bit of issue with the morning line because I see Tappet Trice drawn the rail at five to two. I agree that he will be the favorite, but I think he will be lower than five to two. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. We have to remember it's so easy uh, with, with all the Derby prep races coming every weekend and, 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 and new winners emerging. It's so easy to, to forget about a horse. And, and I don't know, maybe the, the, the line maker was doing that, uh, because Tappet Trice, uh, as we know, was so impressive uh, in uh, in previous victories in the Tampa Bay Derby uh, and an allowance race at Gulfstream Park, a maiden special weighted aqueduct uh, trained by Todd Pletcher. Um, 
he was that Tampa Bay Derby was very impressive, and yeah, could very well be uh, lower than the five to two. Yeah, there's a lot to like here with Tapit Trice, a big, powerful gray son of Tapit, as you can see there. Uh, Tapit Trice has won three straight nice races. I think each one better than the last three different tracks, which is not easy to do. He's done it at Aqueduct, Gulfstream Park. That allowance win at Gulfstream Park earlier this year was a uh, was a blowout. And then, as you talked about, the Tampa Bay Derby. One of the things I don't like about Top of Trace, Matt, he's got a little tendency to break slowly. And we're talking about 11-horse field drawing the rail. That could spell trouble for the favorite. Yeah, yeah, it could. But, you know, if if he's going to break slowly again, there he will be on the rail, um, can have a ground-saving trip allow the other horses to uh, jockey from position and then swing outside to make his move. Swing outside or hope for room on the inside. I know jockey Louis Saez really <laughs> likes Tapit Trice, and there's a lot of reason to like Tapit Trice here. He's the clear favorite for me. But there are several other interesting horses who could pop up here. Second on the morning line, Matt, is the three verifying. Verifying looked good in his debut at Saratoga. He looked really good in the allowance win at Oaklawn Park two starts back. Um, I'm a little wary of the odds being so close to top of Trice. And again, I don't really think that will happen. Verifying just hasn't been able to quite get it done in graded stakes so far. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. I was a little surprised seeing uh, three to one on verifying and him as the uh, as the second choice. Uh, yes. You know, he, he has flashed some good things, uh, the second in the champagne, but like you said, uh, second in the champagne and then fourth in the rebel, uh, sixth in the breeders cup juvenile just hasn't been able to get it done in when he moved into graded stakes company. Yeah. Perhaps the rebel, he has a little excuse, had a little bit of traffic. Uh, it was a strong pace, but yeah, fourth in the rebel, the horses who came out of the rebel didn't exactly, uh, looks stellar in the Arkansas Derby. It wasn't off track at Oakland Park that day. We'll see. Verifying. Two starts back, though, that win at Oakland was uh, was impressive. And as we look at the time form U.S. pace projector, Matt, they're projecting a pretty fast pace here in the Bluegrass with 11 horses. And Verifying should be up there involved early. They also uh, talk about Major Blue, a real long shot for D. Wayne Lucas, who's won two straight coming out of a five and a half furlong race. So it makes sense he would uh, show some pace. Also, clear the air. Who's cross-centered in the Wood Memorial and would be a real long shot in either race is projected up there early. So, of the favorites, Verifying is the only one really that looks to be very forwardly placed. Yeah, it seems like a fast. They're saying a fast pace, but again, it seems to me like aside from verifying that some of these horses that may be on the lead are not really horses you're going to have to worry about being around at the end of the nine furlong race. And just just let me uh, add to you mentioned uh, clear the air um, horse racing nation just like an hour or so ago got a report from the trainer that. Clear the Air will be running in the bluegrass and not the wood. Okay, so with Clear the Air, a long shot in the bluegrass, that could add a little bit more speed to the race. We also see Blinkers on the number eight, Blazing Sevens. He's actually one of the horses considered on the morning line as, as, a, as a fourth choice, I believe, Matt. Blinkers on. What do you do with this horse? Because Blazing Sevens is son of good magic, trained by Chad Brown. He picks up Irad Ortiz. He gets blinkers on. Very good two-year-old, but his only race at three was a dud. It, it really was, uh, Brian. And and a dud from Chad Brown, a trainer who usually, and, and we know, is very good at having his horses ready to run off of long layoffs. So to see one of uh, Chad's horses basically as a no-show, was certainly a head scratcher. Um, yeah, he won the champagne last year. I don't know. It's hard to know what to expect here. Yeah, the champagne was on a sloppy track. We should have a fast track by the time uh, we get to Saturday afternoon for the bluegrass, Matt. 
uh, Blazing Sevens, um, you know, there, there's a, a lot pointing to him doing better than he did last race, which isn't saying a heck of a lot behind Forte, where he was almost 30 lengths behind Forte. But uh, it's hard for a horse to to come out of a performance like that and pop up and win a grade one in the next one. So I'm kind of off Blazing Sevens, but Blinkers on, I route Ortiz, second race of the year, back class. I could see why people would at least consider Blazing Sevens in here. Another horse I think needs to be considered, and you see him as the third choice on the morning line, Matt, is number 10, Ray's Kane. And, and Ray's Kane, I drew a line through the uh, uh, Tapita race, the race at Turfway Park where he ran on the all-weather surface there. And then if you if you did that, there's there's a bunch to like. This horse has a nice win at Keeneland. His maiden win at Keeneland was uh, was pretty good. And then he ran some good races uh, uh, other than the race at Turfway. Still, coming out of that Turfway race where he just, he was okay. He just didn't do a whole lot. Uh, over 20 to 1 in the Gotham. And the Gotham turned out to be an absolute runaway with a fast pace. He rallied, had actually had a little bit of trouble early, but he just dominated down the stretch of that Gotham. He sure did, Brian. Uh, 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 running from 11th place in a big field, uh, to, to get the lead and draw off to win by uh, seven lengths. Um, yeah, it, it was a quite a long shot performance that, you know, uh, uh, was really super impressive. Uh, can a horse like that, you, as you described his past races, can a horse like this put two races together like that? I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it is a question mark, and that's a good question, uh, Matt. Coming off the big Gotham win, will he bounce and not come back? But I, I do like the fact that this is a horse who's trained by Ben Colbrook. He's stable at Keeneland. Keeneland's his home base, and 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 clearly from his races last year, this is a track he liked. I also like the fact that he's got a little bit more early speed than some of the other horses in here who I'm considering, notably Top of Trice, of course. Uh, but also horses like uh, maybe Classic Car Wash, maybe uh, 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 Sun Thunder, maybe even Hayes Strike. Um, Race Kane might be ahead of them early, and that's not obvious coming out of the big rally in the Gotham. But remember, that was a super fast pace and a one-turn race. I think Race Kane could get closer position here in the bluegrass and, and be a threat on his home track. Let's talk about some of those other horses I mentioned, Matt. Uh, classic Car Wash. Uh, you look at his last four races, there, there's a lot to like. I don't know if anything stands out as, wow, he's a good horse. But Mark Cassie coming off a second behind top at uh, Trice, where he was clearly second best in the Tampa Bay Derby. Looks like he's run four solid races in a row. Yeah, nice horse, Brian. Absolutely. Second in the Tampa Derby. Before that, third in the Sam F. Davis. Uh, uh, um, and as we know, Cassie likes to uh, run his horses into shape and 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 – this one's got some, you know, as you mentioned, some good finishes uh, to, to have him in form. Um, I guess maybe a live long shot. Yeah. And, and if you think Top and Trice is clearly the best horse in the race, Classic Car Wash is the horse, again, who is clearly second best in the Tampa Bay Derby. And he should be double digits here. Uh, two others, Hayes Strike coming off a win. Stakes win at Laurel. I thought it was good performance. He also had a few good performances rallying. As a two-year-old in graded stakes races, Kenny McPeak might have him turning around, an experienced horse coming off a nice win. Sun Thunder, not so good in the Louisiana Derby, but there was no pace at all in the Louisiana Derby. Before that, he ran second in, a, in the Risen Star, and the horses who were first and third in the Risen Star came back with big wins. Yeah, uh, uh, both of those horses that you mentioned have run nicely, have, you know, a, a fair share of uh, Kentucky Derby points already. Those horses that you mentioned, maybe uh, 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 picking up 20 points might be enough to get them into the Derby field. Yeah, yeah. I think obviously the favorite top of Trice, but also Hayes Strike and Sun Thunder are horses who you should strongly consider rallying up into the exotics. We're taking a look at that pace projector one more time if they're right if there is a fast and somewhat contentious pace look at the back end of this race you'll see tapa trice is projected to be last early with uh hay strike and sun thunder horses who have proven themselves in graded stakes to some extent all uh, near the back of the pack here in the bluegrass uh mendelssohn's march 
is going to be a long shot in here. He drew a pretty bad post, I guess, the 11 outside in the bluegrass. But his two races, he showed some real versatility for trainer Kenny McPeak, and he's a horse that I can see popping up a little bit here. Yeah, got a, a got a victory by disqualification on the turf, and and then on the main track, has a nice allowance win at Oaklawn Park. Yeah, and he, and he did some different things, a slop, uh, a turf, uh, uh, on the lead, coming from off the lead. So Mendelssohn's March, tough spot here in the bluegrass, but he might be a horse I take a look at down the road a little bit. All right, Matt, we've gone from Southern California to Keeneland, Lexington, Kentucky. Now we're going to go to the, the East Coast, uh, the Big A, New York, and we're going to look at the Wood Memorial Field, Matt, 13 horses. I you could have knocked me over with a feather when I saw we have horse center rods here and and my horse center rods are very different than the morning line. Uh, Dreamlike is a maiden, and uh, the morning line odds maker at Aqueduct tabbed him as the seven to two second choice. Is, yeah. is that uh, is that a little bit of a surprise to you as well? Uh, yeah, Brian, it certainly was uh, when I saw that last night. Uh, when uh, David Aragona's odds uh, uh, were tweeted out uh, by him. Um, I'll be honest with you, Brian. I didn't only do a double take. I did a triple take and maybe, maybe even four times like, well, wait a second. What am I missing here? Um, uh, and when I finally got the PPs uh, for uh, the Wood Memorial, you know, taking another look to try and figure out. And I guess as a horse that is still a maiden with two second place finishes, I guess it's because those second pay place finishes both earn pretty high speed figures, speed figures that um, in the most recent one were as good as anybody in the field, but okay, fine. Um, he still hasn't won a race, and now he's going to be in a, in the Wood Memorial running in a 12-horse field. Yeah, thir 13, Matt. Like, get, get a baker's dozen here in the Wood Memorial. I, I agree with everything you said. I had Dream like closer to 8-1. to one. I, I Probably he'll be somewhere in the middle because he's he's been well-backed, and if you're a buyer speed figure guy – that's a buyer speed figure morning line because dream like uh, has good buyers, but he was second in two maiden races. That's all coming into this grade two wood Memorial. Um, I think it also shows some disrespect to the rest of the field. I think the morning line maker at Naira was kind of saying, well, there's, there's not a whole lot else in here. We shall see. Um, interesting horses on the lead here. Dream like gets blinkers as well. Uh, the Todd Pletcher trainee that we've been talking about. But there's also number seven, Arctic Arrogance, a nice New York bred. He's run three straight stakes races where he's been on the lead. Proven horse. He's a speed horse, although he gets blinkers off. And then you have Uncle Jake, number 10. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I think he'll be lower than my original uh, odds uh, stab here because he was a Bob Baffert horse. He moved to the East Coast for Brittany Russell, and uh, he won his broke his maiden in his second start at Laurel for fun. It wasn't super fast, and you know he, he wasn't beating anybody. But Uncle Jake is another horse I think will show speed, Matt. So we're gonna throw up the Timeform U.S. Pace projector here for the Wood Memorial. There it is. Dreamlike's back there in fourth. I think he might show more speed from the rail. Then you see uh, Arctic Arrogance, the seven. Uncle Jake, who I talked about, the 10. Throw in Mr. Swagger, another lightly raced horse. It looks like there should be a pretty good pace here in the Wood Memorial. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. And and we're 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 going a mile and an eighth at Aqueduct to race a, a track that is always deep. And, and it, it, it's no easy task uh, going the two turns and getting the nine furlongs uh, at Aqueduct. So, you know, it, it sure makes you think that... Uh, with a big field like this, that uh, advantage probably goes to the horses coming from off the pace. Yeah, and and there's where I agree with you, Matt, and that's why we focused on the pace here a little bit early in our rundown of the Wood Memorial and, and the fact that Dreamlike was so low on the morning line, the Naira morning line at 7-2. to two. 
I, I think it might be tough for horses that are out there. If uh, the pace projector is right, fast pace, contentious pace, nine furlongs, inexperienced horses. I'm looking for horses to come from off the pace. Of course, we have to start with the number 13. Will it be a lucky number 13? Hit Show is a deserving favorite in the Wood Memorial. Um, he, he, his past performance is trained by Brad Cox, look a lot like, as did Angel of Empire going into last week's Arkansas Derby. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, past performances that it's hard to put a knock on. Hit, hit Show now has three wins in four starts, uh, and obviously the, the most recent one was a uh, uh, very impressive victory in the Withers, going the nine furlong distance, going the two turns um, at Aqueduct. Uh, you know, that that was quite a performance. Another win on the Derby Trail for Brad Cox. Um, but yeah, uh, what can you say about, you know, he's being uh, uh, the favorite all the way on the outside. But again, um, you know, we don't expect him to be in a rush to try and get out front. So he should be able to be uh, uh, given a patient ride and get good position. There, there, There's a lot to like with Hit Show, including the stable, his performances, his performances at the distance, his performances over the track. But the 13 does, does worry me a little bit, honestly. And as the favorite, it, it makes me want to pick against Hit Show. He might prove to be the best and he might win anyway. But at the very least from the 13, Paul, I think he'll have to run a little bit uh, a little bit more around the first turn. I also even more so think he might get shuffled back a little bit more. We saw it last week with Forte and Forte had to do extra work in the Florida Derby. Yeah. I don't know if Hitcho is the type of horse that can overcome like Forte did in the Florida Derby. We'll see. He might be or he might be just too good for the rest of the horses in this field. But there's concern for me from the 13 hole. A gaggle of horses still to talk about, Matt, who can rally. Number two, Shadow Dragon. Uh, two races back, looked good in the Holy Bowl. Last time, not quite so good in the Fountain of Youth. Maybe had a little excuse in there. Maybe this is an easier field. Uh, the New York bred for Bill Mott, he could bounce back here. Yeah, uh, you, it, certainly if he can run back to that second-place performance uh, in the Holy Bowl um, and Bill Mott, and Bill Mott you know, has a way of – uh, having horses come back and run well after, you know, a, a, a performance prior that was not as good. Yeah, Shadow Dragon could bounce back, and he's one of those horses who should be picking up horses in the stretch. As is the number four, Matt, I'm going to say it right off. I'm not a fan of General Banker. He cashes checks, and people love that, and that's good, and that's good for exotics, but Stretching out even farther against a deeper field, at least. I, I'm not really on General Banker's bandwagon in this one. Yeah, I'm not either, but a very nice horse. 11 starts, last three races. He's got three thirds in a row, all on the, the, the Kentucky Derby Trail at Aqueduct in the Gotham and the Withers in the Jerome. Um, but yeah, it's three thirds in a row. I wouldn't mind owning the horse, but uh, I don't think we're going to see him. Uh, in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and those, those thirds are not exactly um, threatening for the win type of thirds either. Number five is very interesting to me. In fact, I tabbed him as the co-second choice on my morning line, or, or co-third choice, uh, excuse me, on my morning line. Uh, Slip Mahoney is a horse I just think is going to pop up and do something pretty big. And, and I guess I like him going farther and farther. Um, he beat Kruppi when it looked like Kruppi was going to run right by him three starts back. He gave Tapit Trice everything he wanted when Tapit Trice broke his maiden. And last time, he just had a very wide late trip after falling back to last in the Gotham. But he did get up for second. He was really running down the stretch. This might be a spot for Slip Mahoney. Yeah, I tell you, I was at the Gotham that day. And, and uh, after the race won and, you know, the initial uh, – uh, shock of seeing the long shot winner uh, in uh, down in the paddock. Uh, the big talk was about Slip Mahoney and that Slip Mahoney uh, had a tough trip and a little bit of an uncharacteristic trip getting so far behind and then having to run really wide around the turn uh, to get into t contention and then getting up for second. Uh, there was a lot of talk that in the Gotham, Slip Mahoney was 
maybe the best horse. Yeah, and that's saying something because Race Kane won by a lot of lengths in that uh, in that Gotham mat. Yeah, Slip Mahoney is a very interesting horse. Let's look at that time form U.S. pace projector. We already talked about the fast pace. Now we look at some of the horses who are farther back, and you'll see Kruppi and Classic Catch, 9-11, way back early. Uh, Shadow Dragon, we mentioned the two is back early. Uh, also, the, 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 the favorite uh, hit show, pretty far back, 13. But you do see Slip Mahoney there, uh, five, kind of in the middle of the pack. And I guess that's kind of an average between his recent races. And uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Slip Mahoney just a little bit closer than he was in the Gotham. You could tell Matt and I both like Slip Mahoney a little bit. Maybe he'll be even a little bit higher than the six to one, but it's hard to know. Mm -hmm. He is also trained by Brad Cox, as is, of course, the favorite hit show. Uh, other horses to talk about we haven't mentioned yet, Matt, the number nine, Krupi, the second maiden in the field. I can't throw out either maiden because I think Krupi is a talented horse. Um, too far back uh, on a slow pace last time in Louisiana, but Krupi is a horse with the right situation. Could pop up. Yeah, and if you look at you look back at uh, the maiden special rate races that he ran in and he hasn't gotten a win, uh, maybe that's because he's run behind some very good horses that have done some very good things on the Derby trail already. He ran behind Slip Mahoney. He ran behind Disarm, who ran so big uh, in his recent start. He ran behind Instant Coffee with his two wins on the Derby trail. Um, but still, he's winless. Yeah, Krupi, if there's horses coming from a, the clouds, which could certainly happen here in the Nine for a Long Wood Memorial with a good pace, Krupi is one horse to think about it in your exotics. I think the 11 is as well. I, I probably have him a little too low on my morning line at 6-1. to one. I think he's a little higher on the Naira morning line. But I like his races at 9 furlong. I like uh, 9 furlongs. I like his progression. He's done it at different tracks. I think Classic Catch makes a lot of sense as a horse who could be in the money in the Wood Memorial. For Todd Pletcher. Three different tracks. One of them was at Aqueduct, where he had a win going the nine furlong distance uh, um, and uh, had a win in his most recent start in an allowance at Gulfstream, also going nine furlongs. Uh, so for Todd Pletcher, um, you know, uh, certainly has to be considered. Yeah, can't throw him out. Can't throw a lot out in this Wood Memorial yes. uh uh, perhaps the least uh, star-laden race of the three, but uh, an interesting betting race at Aqueduct on Saturday. All right, Matt, it's time. We've talked enough about these three races. Let's get some top picks. We're going to start with the Santa Anita Derby, and we're going to start with you, my friend. I tell you, Brian, I think uh, it's a two-horse race in the uh, Santa Anita Derby. I think it's between Practical Move and Go Rocket Ride. Um, I have tons of respect for uh, uh, Practical Move, but I'm going to go with Go Rocket Ride because, as I mentioned, I think he's got some upside. The question is whether uh, he's going to reach that potential uh, uh, in the Santa Anita Derby or if it's going to come later on in the summer. Yeah, and, and I'm with you on the two-horse race. I, I think one of two horses will win, and I think your horse is the horse I like second best in the Santa Anita Derby. I really like Practical Move. I, I, I just think he's a horse getting better and better. I think he's a horse who can win the Kentucky Derby. But uh, more immediately, I think this race will probably set up pretty well for him because I don't think Go Rocket Ride will have an easy trip in the uh, uh, on the lead in the Santa Anita Derby as he stretches out to nine furlongs. I think Practical Move wins another one. He's my top pick in the Santa Anita Derby. Let's go to the Bluegrass, Matt. And uh, yeah, the, the, to me, it was between two horses and I see you're on the one I didn't pick. Yeah, um, Tappet Trice, you know, is going to be the favorite on the rail. Um, you know, I thought, oh, you know, I, I, I took a good bit of time going through the field, trying to find somebody who might beat the favorite. Uh, I, I looked at Ray's Kane, but again, as I mentioned early, is earlier, is a horse gonna like that going to come from a long shot victory and put put it together and run another big race at Keeneland? I'm not sure. Um, lots to like about what we've seen from Tappet Trice already from Pletcher. I'm going with Tappet Trice. Tappet Trice is undoubtedly the horse to beat in the bluegrass. I'm a little concerned about his ability to break from the gate and being on the rail. 
but uh, that could work out well. He could he could just drop back on the rail early and make one great big run and just prove better. Um, so for me, it was two horses to pick from. I went with Ray's Kane, and I think part of that is the Keeneland connection. It's his home track. He's won over the track. He's coming off a very nice win in the Gotham, and I think he beat at least a pretty good horse because if we look at our top picks for the Wood Memorial, you'll see the horse that he beat in the Gotham. I'm surprised we're both on the same horse in the, in the Wood Memorial, Matt. Yeah, I don't know, you know, if that should be such such a surprise, Brian. I think we both saw the same things. We saw a horse that's uh, uh, from the Brad Cox barn. We saw a horse that's got really good breeding. We saw a horse that ran a big race with certainly not an ideal trip, maybe a little bit of an uncharacteristic trip, we both think. Um, so um, I went with Slip Mahoney. Yeah, and I, I think he's a horse who's going to love nine furlongs and beyond. Uh, maybe a long shot to consider in the uh, Kentucky Derby. But but first, he has to run pretty big in the Wood Memorial just to get into the Kentucky Derby. We're both hoping for uh, six to one or higher for Slip Mahoney. I, I'm hoping for higher, honestly, in the Wood Memorial. But uh, yeah, I, I think he's a horse ready to break out. And hopefully the Wood Memorial will be the day for Slip Mahoney. There are our top picks, folks. Jam-packed show of Derby Preps. I hope you enjoyed it. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Hey, yeah, lots, uh, lots of action this weekend. As you mentioned, not just those three Derby Prep races, big cards uh, um, also filled with uh, great graded stakes races. So enjoy the weekend, and we'll have a much better idea uh, uh, at the end of the day on Saturday about who's going to be in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and that in its and of itself is exciting, Matt. So we'll know who uh, probably will be in just about to at least 18 or 19 uh, in the Kentucky Derby in uh, in a month. Folks, thanks for watching. As, uh, as we appreciate you every single week, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Make a comment. All that helps us here. I want to thank Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. That's our sponsor. And, of course, Time Form US for their great pace projections. Folks, good luck. Big weekend, big derby prep weekend. We hope we helped you uh, hone in your uh, uh, selections and your bets. We hope you win big. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.